Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, we're going to talk about rounding numbers in Microsoft Access. I'm going to show you how to use the int, fix, round functions, and we're going to talk about bankers rounding. Today's question comes from Phyllis up in Winnipeg, Manitoba, up in the Great White North, one of my silver members. Phyllis says, I need to calculate a commission rate based on monthly sales. The rate is based on whole dollar amounts only, and we chop off any cents. I know about the round function, but I don't ever want to round up. How can I do this? So Phyllis, what you're saying is you actually don't want to round that number off. You just want to chop off the pennies. So $1.50 becomes $1. For that, you're not going to use the round function. You're going to use the int function, and I'll explain that in a few minutes. But first, let's go over why we want to round numbers in the first place. So let's say you charge a sales tax of 7.5%. On a $101 order, you're going to have to charge $7.57.5 in tax. And of course, those of us who've watched Superman 3 or the movie Office Space know that fractions of a penny can cause lots of problems. We're talking evil cyborg take over the world problems, or at least going to burn the building down problems. But in any case, we don't want those fractions of a penny sticking around long in our database. Now keep in mind, when you're dealing with currency values in Microsoft Access, generally they only display two digits. But the actual value with that fraction of a penny is stored in the field. So over here, for example, if I put 1.757 into a currency field, it's going to display as 1.76. And so on with these other ones. And if you don't round each one of these line items off first, and instead you just add them all up, you get two totally different values down here. Yeah, they're off a penny, and that can cause problems. So from what I understand, it's generally accepted accounting practice to round off each line item, then add all of those up. You don't add them all up first and then round the final value. So now there's a couple of different functions we can use to handle our rounding. First is the round function, which will round to the nearest integer. So values under 0.5 round down, values over 0.5 round up, and values equal to 0.5 use bankers rounding. We'll talk about bankers rounding in just a second, but let's see how this works first in the database. Okay, here I am in my tech help free template. This is a free database. You can download a copy off my website if you want to. You'll find a link down below in the links section, but we're just going to use a simple table and a query today. So let's make a real simple table just to hold some numbers. And I'll put the value n in there. That's the field name, and it'll be a number of type double. Remember, there's really two field sizes that you want to remember. There's double and there's long integer. Forget all the rest of these for now. All right, those are more advanced. If you want counting numbers integers, use long integer. If you want anything with a fractional component, pick double, which we need for this example. Okay, that's pretty much it. Let's save this. Control S. I'm going to call this NT, my number table. Hit OK. Primary key, nah. We don't need one. This is just a simple table. For most real tables, I do put a primary key, an ID in there, an auto number, but we don't need it for this one. All right, so save that. Let's close it. Let's open it up and put some values in it. How about 1, 1 1.1, 1 1.5, 1 1.9, 2, 2.1, 2.5, 2 2.9. And let's put their negatives in too. I'm going to copy all these and paste and just make these all negative values. You'll see why in a few minutes. Okay. Looks good, looks good. Now we're gonna make a query, use these numbers in the query and put calculated fields in to show the functions like round and stuff. If you don't know how to make a calculated query field, go watch my video on it. There's a link right there. You'll find a link down below in the links section below the video. Go watch that if you don't know how to make a calculated query field. It's really easy. I'm gonna show you in just a second anyway. So let's go to create and then query design. Bring in your NT. Close that, and then bring that n down into the query. If I run it now, I just get a list of n's. Okay, let's make a calculated query field to round that number off to the nearest integer. So right down here, we're going to type in r colon. It's going to be round n. Just like that. Let me zoom in so you can see it better. All right, r colon round n. All right, hit OK, and then run it. 
And there you go. Each one of those numbers is rounded off to the nearest integer. So 1.1 is rounded to 1. 1.9 rounds up to 2. That's closer than 1, right? 2.1 rounds to 2. 2.9 rounds up to 3. And the same thing with the negatives. That goes to 1. That goes to negative 2, right? Negative 2, and then that one's negative 3. Now, the interesting thing to note here are the 0.5 values. Notice how 1.5 rounds up to 2, but 2.5 rounds down to 2 also. What is that? Well, that's something called banker's rounding. So what is banker's rounding? Well, when you were taught rounding in high school, they said if that fractional part is 0.5 or greater, you're going to round it up. Okay? Less than that, round it down. But the problem now that you get is more values will be rounded up than down. And this works okay you know, with high school math problems or with a very small set of data. But if you're running an accounting system with thousands and thousands of transactions, okay, over a long period of time, you're going to see a bias in that more values are getting rounded up than down. So what banker's rounding does is it says, okay, look at the number to the left of what you're rounding. If that value is odd, then round up. If it's even, round down. And that balances out the rounding over a large set of data. So you can see right here, 1.5, the 1 is odd, so we're rounding up. All right, 2.5, the 2 is even, so we round it down. Okay, and 3.5, of course, would go up. So that's banker's rounding. If you don't like banker's rounding, if you want to go with high school rules and always round 0.5s up, I will show you how to deal with that in the extended cut. So now that brings us to Phyllis's problem. Phyllis wants to always round down. She wants to always chop off fractions, pennies basically, and round down to the nearest dollar. So she wants to use the int function. Int rounds down to the nearest integer. Negative numbers will also round down, so they'll keep going lower. Okay? So let's see how that works. Let's go design view here. Next column over. We'll make this one i colon is the int of n. All right, i is the int of n, the integer function. All right, when I run this now, there you go. You can see the int function. All right, here you can see 1.1 rounds down to 1. 1. 1.5 rounds down to 1. 1. 1.9 rounds down to 1. See that? 2.1 is 2. It basically chops off that fractional component. But it's different for negative numbers. With negative numbers, it keeps going down. So even a negative 1.1 goes down to negative 2. We're always going lower to the lower integer. And basically, it rounds toward negative infinity, if you look at the, the number line. Okay? So negative 2.1 goes down to negative 3. That's int. Now, you might not always want that. You might want your positive numbers to round down, but your negative numbers to round up. In other words, you want to round closer to 0. For that, we're going to use the fix function. Fix rounds toward zero. So positive numbers round down, negative numbers round up. So let's do fix. All right, F is going to be fix N. All right, F is fix N. Why fix? I don't know. I didn't make it. <laughs> and yes, if you guys haven't figured out by now, I got a little bit of a head cold going on, so that's why my voice might sound different from the rest of my videos. Sorry, I, I, I just can't keep away from you guys, so I got I to gotta do my daily video, right? I, I didn't do one yesterday, and I was like, oh, I wish I would have done one. Okay, so notice fix behaves just like int for the positive numbers, right? Rounds them down, but the negative numbers get rounded up toward zero. Okay, I very seldomly use fix. I use int all the time, though. Now, what if you want to round up? In other words, you want to do the opposite of what Phyllis is doing. Okay? You want to take any number, like any fraction of a penny means you automatically go up to the next dollar. So 1.01 .01 would bring you up to $2. Well, there's the formula for it right there. It's negative int of negative n. Okay? It's basically saying take the int of negative whatever your number is and then multiply that by negative 1. You do the math, it works out. It's not very intuitive at all, but it works. So here's round up. All right, and I'm just going to zoom in for this one here. Zoom in. We'll call this r up. Okay, and this is going to be negative int of negative n. Okay, and yes, this works. You don't have to type in negative 1 times in here. 
Okay, and now when you run that, that rounds everybody up, right? 1.9 goes up to 2. 1.1 goes up to 2. All right, negative 1.9 goes up to negative 1. Remember, toward the right. We're rounding toward positive infinity now. All right. And again, if that formula doesn't seem intuitive, it's not. It's, I, I had to look it up myself. I don't use that often. Um, in the extended cut to the members, I will show you how to write a VB function to replace that. And we'll actually call it Roundup. And no, we won't spray it on the weeds. Aha, see what I did there? Okay. I might be sick, but I still got my twisted sense of humor. And finally, one more. I'm going to show you how to round to an interval. So you want to round to the nearest 10 or the nearest 100 or the nearest 5. There's the formula. I is the interval. So it's I times round N over I comma 0. Okay, that will round it off. And I forgot a closing parenthesis there, didn't I? Look at that. I should got to put one in there. Oop. Don't forget that. Uh, Axis will yell at you. PowerPoint will not. <laughs> So there's the function if you want to round to an interval, like round to the nearest 100, you can see over here in the example. All right, let's see how that works in the database. All right, let me zoom in over here again. And let's call this, let's call this R10. We'll round to the nearest 10. Okay, so it's going to be, what is the interval? 10 times round of N divided by 10, comma 0. The comma 0, by the way, is optional. I'm going to talk about this next. All right, this is just how many decimal points you want to round to. Okay, hit OK. And now when we run this, everybody's rounding down because these are all really small numbers. Let's put some other numbers in here. Let's put a 7 in there, and that rounds to 10. All right, 12 rounds to 10 also. 19, right? And how about 15? Okay, and this will also follow bankers rounding. So if I put in here 25, it also rounds to 20. So you look at the digit to the left of the one that's being rounded, and in these cases, we're rounding to the tens digit. Okay? Yes, and if you want to round to anything other than a whole number, anything other than an integer, all right, the round function can take a parameter. So, for example, let's come over here. Let's say, uh, let's call this uh, R2. And we'll say uh, it's going to be round n, comma, um to two decimal places. So now instead of rounding to an integer, we're rounding to two decimal places. Okay, so when I run this now, all right, let's put some new values in here. If I type in one, I just get a one, right? 1 1.5, I still get a 1.5. 1.55, I get 1.55. 1.55, I get 1.56. See, it's rounding to two decimal places. Okay, 2.555 is a 2.56 okay so there you go there's your rounding your int your fix your bankers rounding and lots more and if you want to learn even more in the extended cut for members i'm going to show you how to make functions out of those counterintuitive formulas that we were just using who wants to remember how those things work or look them up no i just want to have a function called round up or round two and then we'll also do one called school round which is my name for a function where I'm going to teach you how to round like it was in school. So anything that's 0.5 or higher will automatically round up. All right. I have seen some statistics programs where they do say that you shouldn't use bankers rounding. So you might need that. And if you want to learn even more in my access expert level eight class, I cover all kinds of stuff more with rounding values, bankers rounding, nesting functions, calculating sales tax, all kinds of stuff. That's in my Access Expert 8 class. You'll find a link to that down below. So I hope you learned some stuff today, and we'll see you next time. How do you become a member? Click on the Join button below the video. After you click the Join button, you'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks. Silver members and up will get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class each month, and more. Gold members get access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use. You'll also get a higher priority if you decide to submit any tech help questions to me, and you'll get one free expert class each month after you finish the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks, plus even higher priority for tech help questions, access to all of my full beginner courses for every subject, and one free developer class each month after you finish the expert classes.
These are the full-length courses found on my website, not just for access, too. I also teach Word, Excel, Visual Basic, and lots more. You can now become a Diamond sponsor and have your name or company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown in each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. But don't worry, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free, and click on the bell icon to select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Make sure you click the show more link down below the video to find additional resources and links. You'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted, so if you'd like to get an email every time I post a video, click on the link to join my mailing list. Even if you don't want to become a member, feel free to donate to my tip jar. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got puppies to feed. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access. It's over four hours long, and I just updated it for 2021. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below that you can click on. And also, if you like level one, level two is just $1. Yep, that's all, $1. And it's free for all members of my YouTube channel at any level, even supporters. Want to have your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page on my website, and you can send me your question there. While you're on my site, feel free to stop by the Access Forum. Lots of good conversations happening there. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course, YouTube. Once again, my name is Richard Ross. Thank you for watching this tech help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something today. I'll see you again soon.